tuned in today to the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everybody. I'm Megan Mozak, and I'm back in the studio with Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarent. They're financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation, and we have a great show lined up for you today. We're going to dive into questions that need to be asked, not questions from you to your advisor, but questions your advisor should be asking you as you're preparing for retirement. And if they're not, we're going to tell you why that could be a red flag. We also want to tell you today about the courses that the foundation has sponsored. And these are courses that are held at major colleges and universities. And if you're listening today from the state of Michigan or the state of Missouri, welcome. We have options for you in both of those states, many locations designed to serve you. And we're going to be sharing how you can attend and get a front row seat and get registered. And we want to make sure that you know this program and many others are found wherever you find your favorite podcast. You can simply search for the name of our show, which is Retirement Education Hour. You can go back and listen to this very program, share it with a friend, or listen to many of our previous episodes. Kirk and Michael, it's great to be back with you. I'm so excited about this show topic today because you're kind of flipping the script, aren't you? Yes, Megan. That's exactly what we're trying to do is give people a little different perspective. The, the goal here is a couple of things. One is to make sure you know the questions they should be asking you and what you need, at least what you need to know to make sure you, you have the right team. So that's part of the responsibility of our charity, the Retirement Education Foundation, is to help you get informed and give you the tools to be able to choose the right people to help you. And if you're trying to do this yourself, if you're going to do it yourself, you need to at least know the critical levers, the critical questions you should be asking yourselves when you're building this plan. That's one of the issues here in terms of people just don't know what questions they should be asking and what should be asked of them. And so when people are learning about all this for the first time, they think, oh, well, my person, you know, manages my portfolio. That's not everything. That's, that's a one very small piece of this. There are so many questions that they should be asking you to understand how to better build this puzzle for you. Michael, this isn't an accident. Megan, this isn't an accident. We're posing this question this way today. What questions should your advisors be asking you is because the majority of you that have advisors, you're working with advisors that have focused on accumulating your wealth. And their primary focus has been historically around what you're investing in. And those of you who are managing your own money and hoping to manage your own retirement that's your focus too. That's what you believe is going to drive your success in retirement is what you invest in. And that is not at all. That is not at all what's going to drive your success in retirement. It's like number 10 on the list of the top 20 things that's going to drive your success in retirement. Your, you, well, I, I want to be careful I say this, Michael. What you invest in and its return isn't what's going to drive your success in retirement. Per growth does not equal income or what you're willing to spend or what you're going to pay in taxes and or how or what you're going to be comfortable spending in retirement. It's great your portfolio is doing re really well, but you're worried about next year when we have a recession or a major market event. And when you have that major market event, you're going to change all of your spending patterns. So we're trying to help you see the right questions that your advisors should be asking you, or if you're doing this yourself, what questions you should be asking yourself. And we're convinced after teaching thousands of people for over 10 years, most people going into retirement are not ready for this. And they're not ready because they don't know what they don't know. It's hard to understand, okay, I, my person, my team should be asking me these questions. Well, if they're not, you're not going to know it. And so that's what's so challenging to make sure you're with the right team or with the right person. Or if you're doing it yourself, be aware of what questions you should be asking yourself to have a complete plan. There is not a lot of people really focused on retirement, right? And therefore, as a result, most people are going to way underspend what they could be spending in retirement. They will work longer than they need to work. They will pay more taxes than they need to pay. They're going to leave. If they're married, they're going to leave their surviving spouse in a poorer position than they could have if they planned and understood exactly what they should be hearing and pe what sh people should be asking them. So attend one of our eight-hour courses. We're teaching at most of the major universities in your area. If you'd like to attend this course, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. So I know a lot of the things that people, you mentioned earlier, people are focused on in the accumulation growth 
phase is just building their wealth, saving more, growth versus value stocks, trying to time sectors. That is all nonsense. And that really should start to fall down the list of priorities once you're making that shift from the growth phase to the spend down phase, the decumulation phase in retirement. The reality is, Michael, you're right. And most people, seriously, your relationships with money are broken. Broken at this phase of your life. If you're within 10 years of retirement or in retirement, what the majority of Americans, their relationship with money is just broken. And to be rational with your finances as you retire and you become more vulnerable and you age and cognitively things change and now your employers aren't sending you a paycheck, but you got to pay yourself. Everything about your relationship with money has to change. And if it doesn't, you will continue what we describe as serving money, which is focusing on what I'm investing in, focusing on saving, preserving, not spending. That's what you've done your whole life to give you what you have. But now it's time to let money serve you, Michael. And the problem is there is no incentive, Paul. I mean, (laughs) Michael, there is no incentive for the financial service industry to teach you what our charity is teaching the public. There's none. Because- The less you spend in retirement, the less you spend, the more the financial service industry makes. Remember, they get paid based upon the money that they are managing of yours. So the less they have to send you, the longer you work, the less you spend, the more the financial service industry makes. So what is the incentive for them to teach you what should be their priorities? And that's why, you know, a lot of these questions that we're going to talk about today don't get asked. An advisor won't always ask, like, why are you still working? Because if that person is still working, they're still growing the portfolio that grows the advisor's income. So why that person's not incentivized to ask their client, why are you still working? Let's talk about why you're still working. Is Do you need to? Maybe not. But if you're still working, maybe it's a, psych- a psychological reason. So I think we did a good job of setting up, teasing what we're going to talk about. We're going to get into the spe- some of the specific questions and why those are important questions that your advisor should be asking you. It's part of what we teach in the eight-hour course. Now, these courses are taught at most of the major universities around Michigan and a number of colleges and universities in Missouri. They're taught in two evenings or full one full Saturday eight-hour course. And we teach them online. We are streaming these from the university, so if you want to stay in your home, you can watch it there. But I'm going to tell you, you need to be focused because it moves fast. To attend one of these courses, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be right back. Plenty more with Kirk and Michael straight ahead. Glad you're with us on the show today. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here with financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. We're talking about the questions that your advisor should be asking you. And if they're not asking you these questions, well, it might be time for a wake-up call. And we're talking to Kirk and Michael about that. We're going to get right back in our topic. I want to make sure that you have the phone number and the website so you can register and get your seat reserved for the Retirement Education Foundation's upcoming courses held at colleges and universities right in your community. The website is retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call 800-240-8981. For our listeners in the state of Michigan, we've got these courses held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. And if you're in the state of Missouri, you can check the website for a list of locations at major colleges and universities right near you. Again, that's Retirement Planning EDU. O-R-G. And a reminder, if you want to listen to this program or any other of our programs in our library, you're welcome to do it wherever you find your podcasts. That's right. Just search for Retirement Education Hour. Okay, so back to these questions. Now, Kirk and Michael, you say these are questions we should be hearing from our advisors as they're helping us plan for retirement. And one of those questions is, how much income do you want in retirement? Notice I said want. You're not talking about need. What's the difference here? Well, okay, so this is probably the most important part of the show today because everything starts here. Now, I also want to be careful because I'm listening 
to you speak, Megan, I, I'm thinking back to our first segment, and I'm thinking to myself, if I'm a listener, why is a charity trying to convince me that I don't have the right advisor? That's my translation of what we've been saying, and that's not what we're saying. What we're trying to do is give you the questions that your advisor should be asking you, and if they're not asking you, you need to get the education to understand the right things that they should be asking you, or if you're doing this yourself, you should be asking yourself. And it all starts, everything starts when you're within five to 10 years of retirement, through retirement, everything starts on how much money do you want to spend in retirement, not what you need. They intentionally will ask you how much do you need in retirement because the less you ask for, the less they're going to, that's what they're going to give you. So if you're worth $3 million at retirement and you say, I only need $80,000 a year of income, well, that's all they're going to give you because remember, the less of your money you spend, the more they make. So the right question is, how much do you want in retirement? And then we'll tell you if you can have what you want, right? Your advisor should be able to tell you. Okay, so that's that's one, Michael. I think most important to this question and why it's the first question they need to address way before they retire, five to 10 years of retirement, is based upon whatever that number is and what they have, that determines how much risk they should or shouldn't have in their portfolios and what path they need to take to get what they want. 100%. And this is a really common misunderstanding that people come into the class with. People come into the class thinking that their risk tolerance, how much risk they can tolerate, aggressive, conservative, moderate, set aside the fact that those categories are very subjective and not very helpful, but people will label themselves as a quote unquote, moderate investor, they think, okay, based on my risk tolerance, that's what I should invest like. That might not be the case. If you have enough to pull your risk back, or if you're not on track yet, you need to take more risk. What you want should be dictating how much risk you are taking, not what risk tolerance you think you should be targeting based on a quiz you took online or based what based on what your friends are investing in or things like that. Here's the problem, Michael, is it's herd mentality. It's the financial service industry conditioning people to follow these guidelines and these rules. This is how we determine you risk. You fill this questionnaire out and then that's what you're, that's garbage. You need to start focusing and what, do we, what we teach in the class is goal-driven risk profile, right? Warren Buffett said you have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. Many of you listening right now already have what you need to give you the retirement you want. So by taking too much risk only puts you at risk of having a worse retirement because you've already won the marathon. You already have what you need to give you the retirement you want. Some of you may be way short of what your goals are. And if that's the case, then you need to take, based upon an educated uh, and informed decision, I'm not going to meet what I want. Do I take more risk now or do I accept I'm going to have to work longer? But you don't wait until, oh, I'm getting laid off I, or I'm, 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 I'm getting tired. I want to retire now to figure this out. It's five to 10 years before you think you want to retire is when you begin to figure out what do I want in retirement and what amount of risk should I take to give me what I want? This is a massive disconnect, Michael. We can talk about this multiple segments because people don't even understand risk profile. Maybe that's what we talk about as we continue on to the next segment so that people understand what a moderate risk means. How much can I lose versus what do I have? So Michael, if I'm a moderate investor and I've got $3 million and we have another major market event like 2008, my portfolio loses 30%. Now I'm almost to, down to 2 million. Now I don't have what I need to give me what I want. I don't have the amount I need if we have that major market event. And oh, by the way, I'm 60 years old and now my employer told me you're too old and I'm going to lay you off or we're going into a recession, right? It's kind of like you've won something. You don't know you won it, but you keep wanting to play the game over and over and over again when you've already won. And what's, what's really challenging also is that some people, a lot of people, honestly, have sort of over time accepted, you know, I've, I've built my wealth by taking a lot of risk in the stock market and I should continue doing it this way. This has worked for me so far. I'm going to keep riding this risk train here because that's, that's the winning formula. Well, that is the winning formula when you're in the accumulation phase, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, when you're still growing the wealth, that is the right formula. But once we're approaching retirement, more risk does not always equal good. 
No. And P.S. I want to be careful because there is buzzwords in the financial service industry to make suggestions on what someone's trying to sell you. We're you want to know what we're selling you is education. That's what our charity does, right? And so when we're telling you these things, I know people really struggle. This is what's given me the success I've had to this point. Yes, but everything changes. Now it's about income and how do I maximize my income, make sure I don't outlive my money, right? And so everything needs to be driven off. What do I need to give me what I want? Not what's gotten me here. That it's irrelevant what's gotten me here. Now I'm in a new place because now I got to pay myself. So attend one of these eight hour courses. They're at held at most of the major universities in your area. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return with Michael and Kirk right after this. Back with Kirk Cassidy, Michael Mazarin here on the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you're tuned in today. And no matter where you're listening, I want to let you know we've got great solutions for you to attend an in-person deep dive retirement planning course. Now, these are like master's level courses, and we want you there. You deserve a great retirement. It doesn't happen by accident. It does take careful planning, and that starts with education. And that's really the heart of what the Retirement Education Foundation is all about, what they aim to do, and that is educate people who've worked so hard, they've saved tremendously for retirement, and now they want to enjoy those years, and it does take knowledge. And so here's how you can attend. If you're in the state of Michigan, we want you to know that you can attend these courses at the University of Michigan, Michigan State University, Novi or Troy Campus, or Oakland University. And in the state of Missouri, you're welcome to check out the website for all of the local college and universities that are hosting these courses. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. You can go there to find locations and to register. Reserve your seat. They do fill up quickly, these events. Again, it's retirementplanningedu. Dot O-R-G. The phone number is 800-240-8981. And keep in mind, if you'd rather listen and watch from the comfort of your own home, you can do that. These courses are streamed live, each and every one. So be sure to register now. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. And if you're enjoying this program or you'd like to listen to any previous episodes, you're welcome to download them as a podcast. That's right. You can find these wherever you find your favorite podcast. Simply search for the title of our program, which is Retirement Education Hour. Kirk and Michael, I want to dive back into our topic of the day, which is questions your retirement planning advisor should be asking you. And one of those questions is, how much income do you want in retirement? I love that question. Well, yeah. I, so let's just let's circle back because I'm really fearful that we might have just confused more people than gave people answers. And again, the goal is to understand what they should be asking you, and then what are they asking you? Why do they ask it the way they ask it? Right? They're asking, "What do you need?" Not, "What do you want?" And because they're going to give you as little as they have to to be able to make you happy, so that they can make more money managing more of your money. So. I, I think where the confusion gets my gets in here, Michael, is why am I so worried about figuring that out f- maybe five, 10 years before I even retire? And it's because it's a whole different way of looking at how to manage your portfolios, your money, your retirement plans, when you should retire. You don't wait until you retire to figure out how much do you want in retirement. You don't wait till you retire to then make adjustments to your portfolios and then map out a 30-year retirement plan. You really need to start doing that as early as possible because everything is driven based upon what do I need to give me the retirement I want. Everything is driven. So, so I could tell you in our class, that's what we focus on, teaching people to understand what do they want in retirement So then from there, then they can build out a 30-year plan to be most tax efficient with the risk risk, uh, profile based upon their needs and wants instead of what the book suggests. You know, the book says you're 60 years old, so you said 60, 40. No, no, that's irrelevant. And it doesn't matter what your emotional feelings on, oh, I can tolerate more risk. It doesn't, that's not what should drive. I think I'm confusing people more, Michael. Well, and let's look at us. 
let's look at an example here. If someone's going to retire and for their whole lives, they've been taking a lot of risk. And as a result, they've done a great job saving. They've got their $3 million they're preparing for retirement. If they don't need to keep taking risk to give them what they want, the income they want to retirement, if they keep taking that excessive amount of risk, one of two things will likely happen. Either number one, they retire at a lucky time and they have a bull run for a while and they leave a lot more wealth to their kids, grandkids, whoever, than they, than they really care to. Not the end of the world. Number two, if they have a sequence of returns risk event, which happens every three to seven years on average, where there's a, a, a recession, a bear market. and Which happened in 2022. Happened in 2022, happened in 2020. And all of a sudden, their portfolio falls by 30, 40, 50 percent, 20 percent, even 20 percent drastically changes retirement for that person because now they're pulling money out of the portfolio. They're not still saving into it like they were when they were when they were working. Well, that's the disconnect, Rick, Michael, is that we're we're going to be pulling money out and no one else is going to be sending a paycheck. And so people's their their natural reflexes when we have a major market event, I'll just reduce my spending. Well, you can't do that when you're in your 70s and you have to start taking your RMDs. You've got to take it whether you want it or not. And oh, by the way, what people fail to recognize is many of you have it. You already have what you need to give you what you want. And more growth, more risk, more working just means your kids are getting more money. It's not changing your life. So, so that's going to be the next question of the next segment. Let's talk about legacy. What's, what is important to you? Because you guys are taking risks and working longer. Essentially, the only benefit of that is going to be your kids or your loved ones end up with more money. You will be too afraid to spend what you could be spending unless you understand these levers that you need to pull. And it's why we're teaching these classes, Michael. And it's why you need to start mapping this plan out five or 10 years ahead of time, ideally, because if you wait longer than that, now you got to really course correct sharply if you're not on the right track. So it is also helpful, I think, with people understand if you're a moderate portfolio, 60, 40 portfolio in a 2008 event, you would have lost 28 to 32 percent of your portfolio. Right. So I, let's there, there's an emotional uh, amount of risk you can tolerate. And then there is a mathematical amount you can tolerate. And that's why you need to as soon as we can determine what do I want in retirement to make sure that the risk matches what I want and what I and what our goals are. Not a silly book or what the advisor says or a broker says or a questionnaire says. It's irrelevant. How much risk do I need to take to give me what I want? Because that number changes drastically when you're in the accumulation phase still working versus when you're preparing for retirement and in retirement. Sequence of returns. We've talked about it to death on, on other shows. Yeah, so go back and, and you can check out the website to look at a sequence of returns white paper and calculator to better understand that. Or you can go and listen to one of the podcasts where we specifically talk about sequence of returns regularly. That is the number one risk to your retirement. And I would say the number two is not knowing what you need to give you what you want, honestly. So this is why we teach these eight hour classes. This is, um, this is like a master's level course. I don't want to uh, under, I don't want people to underestimate what type of course they're attending. It's a 200 page textbook. It's taught in two evenings, four hours per evening, or one full Saturday. We also stream them live as we're teaching from the universities so you can watch it in your home. If you'd like to attend one of our courses, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. We're back with Kirk and Michael in just a moment. We're glad you're with us. This, of course, is the Retirement Education Hour, and it's great to be in the studio with Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin, their financial instructors, with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we have a great show today as we're diving into the, the questions that you should be hearing. You should be hearing from your retirement advisor. And these are not questions you should be asking. You should be listening for these questions to be asked of you. And Kirk and Michael are sharing those questions with you. If you're not hearing these on the other side of the table, if those are not being asked of you, it's probably time for oh, a second opinion. It's, it could be a sign of a red flag in terms of that advisory relationship. So we're outlining those for you today on the show. We're also telling you how you can get registered for the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. These are like 
master's level courses on retirement planning, and they're held at major colleges and universities in your area. If you're listening today from the state of Michigan, you can attend these courses held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi or Troy campus, or Oakland University. And for a full list of colleges and universities in the state of Missouri, Head to the website to get that. Retirementplanningedu.org is the web address. It's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call to get registered and reserve your seat, 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. And you're welcome to listen to this show and many others in our library, our past episodes, anywhere you find your podcast. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. So as we talk about these questions, Kirk and Michael, questions that our advisor should be asking us, one of them is, how much money do you want to pass to your loved ones, right? Well, this, this question is important for a couple of reasons. We're sort of setting the listener up here a little bit. I, I, I want to I clarify. So Megan said something to the effect of if your advisors aren't asking you, you these questions or if you're, not, if you're doing it yourself and you're not asking yourself these questions, that maybe you need a second opinion. And our, what we're referring to is education, not go see another advisor, because I think you're just going to walk yourself into another mistake. Because you don't know the right questions they should be asking you. You don't know all the levers. This is what we're trying to highlight, why the education, why the charity creates the information and content out on its website to help you know the right questions and that they should be asking you what should be the priority at this point of your life when you're within 10 years of retirement through retirement. So anyone listening to this show today probably recognizes we're focusing on people that have, let's say, a half a million dollars or more, half a million to $20 million saved, because these are questions that people who have saved for retirement should be getting from their teams or themselves as they're approaching retirement. And probably the one of the bigger questions is, how much money, what do you want to leave to your loved ones? Because our fear, we've taught Michael, I I bet we are in now the tens of thousands of people within 10 years of retirement through retirement. We have literally in our private practice helped thousands of people responsible for billions of dollars. And we've taught, I don't know, in how many different universities and colleges around the country. So we know the mistakes that retirees with some resources are making. And that mistake, Michael, is way underspending what they otherwise could be spending. They're spending less than they should because of fear and anxiety. So an advisor's role should be to help probe you to understand why are you behaving the way you're behaving. So if legacy is a priority, leaving a lot of wealth to your kids is a priority, well, then there are things that they should be doing differently than just taking excessive risk in the market to give you, give your your, your loved ones the legacy you want. But what we find more often than not, Michael, is that desire to leave a legacy is more about the fear of outliving their money. It's an excuse, particularly for men who do, the, do try to do it themselves. They will justify not spending what they could be spending in retirement because they will use the excuse, I want to leave something to the kids or a lot to the kids. When we show people math in the class, the amount of wealth that these people are going to be leaving to their kids, their whole world changes. They recognize they are way underspending what they should be spending. They're working way longer than they should. They are too close to their own money. They're not rational and they cannot recognize the amount of money that's going to be at the end of that, at the end of their lifetime. And statistically, Mike, I'm going to let you take a lot. I, I know I've been talking like that. But statistically speaking, the average baby boomer will die with 80% of their wealth that they retired with. They're not spending. You're not spending any of your money because of fear. It's not because of legacy. And that's why that is an important question your advisors should be asking you to try to understand why are you behaving and how are you going to behave with your money. Well, you, you just nailed it. In terms of the baby, the baby boomers are on track to leave over $70 trillion to the next generation. It is the largest generational wealth transfer of all time, and it's not even close. For a lot of people, legacy is a priority, and that's great. But for many people, their first priority was not leaving wealth to their kids, grandkids, whoever. Their first priority was just not outliving it themselves. 
not living their own money. And as a result, they were too afraid to go spend more because they told themselves, well, you know, if I end up leaving a couple hundred thousand dollars, a couple million dollars to my legacy, kids, grandkids, whoever it is, good for them. But if I need it, I'll have it for myself down the road for longevity care, for long-term care, whatever it might be. I'm too afraid to spend it down. So that fear was their first roadblock in spending the money down. It was not a goal of leaving wealth. Right. It was a fear of outliving their own money. Well, the second thing, Michael, is all, uh, the fear of not... So and that's driven by the financial service industry. Again, you've been conditioned. You've got to protect your principal. You've got to protect your principal. I promise you people listening right now are thinking, i got to protect my principal. Well, that means you're going to die with the same amount of money you retired with if you protect your principal. And most of you, that's not your goal to leave your your loved ones two, three, four, five million dollars. Your goal is not to outlive your money. I appreciate that. None, no one's teaching you how to do that. No one's teaching you how to do a controlled spend down of your principal without the chances of outliving your money. And that is what is being taught in the class. And once you know what a successful retirement plan looks like, if you know what that looks like, then you'll begin to understand the the questions your team, your advisors should be asking you to know if you're with the right people. Most of you are not with the right people. I hate to say it. No matter how good the advisor has been for you, how much you trust them, they do not understand all of the retirement levers, and they're not going to get you the 6 7 8 9% withdrawal rates that you should be able to have and have a 0% chance of outliving your income. That is all account, uh, 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 That is all achievable through education, and that's why you need to attend one of these eight-hour classes that we're teaching at most of the major universities in your area. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And there's plenty more with Kirk and Michael on the other side of the break. Stay with us. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Always a pleasure to be in the studio with financial instructors, Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. This is the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you're with us today on the show. We're talking about the questions that your retirement planning professional should be asking you as a client. As you're getting prepared for retirement, you're doing all of that planning, you want to make sure you're covering all of your bases. If you're not hearing these questions from your advisor, well, it's probably time to pause and reevaluate. And this is such a helpful show. I know for me, as I'm hearing these questions and making sure that, you know, these are the questions that are getting some answers and the lead up to your retirement. So, Kirk and Michael, we're going to dive back in here in just a minute, but I want to tell our listeners how they can get registered for the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. These are courses taught at major colleges and universities. If you're listening today from the state of Michigan, keep in mind that these courses are held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy Campus, or Oakland University. And if you're in Missouri today listening to the program, be sure to visit the website for the full list of colleges and universities that have these courses. Again, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or pick up the phone to register and reserve your seat, 800 240 8981. That's 800 240 8981. All courses are streamed live. So if you'd rather listen and watch from home, you can tune in that way as well. And this program, the very one you're listening to, you can go back and listen. You can share it with your spouse or your neighbor. Simply find it wherever you find your podcast. Search for the name of the program, which is Retirement Education Hour. All right, Kirk, Michael, let's do a lightning round. You guys up for that? Let's run through some of these questions that you should be hearing from your retirement planning professional. So we've taken way too much time on just a couple of questions, and there's a ton of questions to get through. So let's do this, Michael. I'm going to do a couple. You do a couple. First one is, and and this isn't an easy one, but your advisor should be asking you about your health and your family's health. And more importantly, is there cognitive issues within the ever in the family, your grandparents, parents, any cognitive issues? We know that automatically cognitive declines begin in our 50s, in our 60s, especially around mathematics. But to know that there's a history, other planning should be put in place to anticipate those things. Michael, a couple other. So sort of in tandem with that is, is are both spouses on the same page? 
it's very common where one spouse or the other, husband or wife or whoever, is managing running the finances. Look how PC you did that. And <laughs> in terms of it, when you're building the wealth, it is very common where one person runs the, the long-term finances, the, the accounts, the investments, things like that. Well, something might happen to that person. Something probably will happen to that person. And if the spouse who's not in the loop is not involved, is now all of a sudden single or they're relying on themselves to manage this, they can make mistakes very quickly and they can also be taken advantage of. M Michael, look, it's a two-player sport. When you get a start to approach retirement and in retirement, both, if you're married, both spouses need to be engaged and involved. No one thinks anything bad's going to happen to them because you're irrational and your relationship with money is broken. You're, you feel invincible. You're not. And I can promise you, your chances of something happening to you are no different than your neighbors or the person down the street, but no one thinks it's going to happen to them. And we see it teaching tens of thousands of people all the time. So we know 80% of women die single, meaning men die before women. And we have them dying in their 60s. We have them dying in their 50s, unfortunately, but 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. I don't care how healthy you are. My sister, I'm not going to get into what my sister in, in her mid 60s or uh, early 60s just went through. I'm telling you guys, it can happen at any point. It's time for both to engage because here's what happens if they don't. Two thirds of elder abuse victims are women. And that's because the baby boomer generation, men tend to take care of the finances and the women need to engage in the women. Men need to let the women engage in the finances earlier so we can prevent these problems. So advisors should be asking who's making the calls, why are they making the calls, who's making the decisions, and how do we get you both involved and engaged in this process? Again, that's why we do the education and we require, we, we tend to require both husband and wife to attend as much as we can. And the second thing, or the, the third or fourth thing here, is the kids. Are the kids on financially su successful tracks? Are there any health concerns with the kids? Are there any concerns with the kids' marriages? Special needs. Special needs. All these things play a factor because you've you spent all this time thinking about yourself and your own retirements, but the kids can impact that. So they should be asking you, tell me about your, your family, your children, anyone you're taking care of, what their marriages are like. There's a 50% divorce rate in our society. That's the truth. So there's a 50% chance your children will get divorced. And what you do with your money today, how you set up your beneficiaries and your estate plans and your trust documents impacts whether your ex-son-in-law or your ex-daughter-in-law gets 50% of your IRAs or your money or not. So all of these, if they're not talking about these things, if they're not, this is why one of the things we teach in the class, Michael, is it's a team. You need to find a team where the advisor the CPA and the attorneys are working like a family office in conjunction together to map this out. Too often, when people are coming to the class, they're coming to the class with fragmented pieces. They have a bunch of puzzle pieces in their portfolio. They have advice from maybe two or three or four different people all being commingled, and they're kind of taking a best swing at it based on this really fragmented approach. And what that leads to is just a disaster of problems as they're aging through their life. So your advisor, guys, sh is not – if you find the right team – now, my, our fear and why we're doing this show is to show you that your team may or may not be qualified for this, and you, if you're doing it yourself, may or may not be qualified. But if you have the right team, you don't walk into the doctors telling them what medicine you should take. You should be going to your team and trusting that they're going to tell you what you need to do, and you need to follow their guidance. But to be able – Listen to us right now to be truly able to follow the full guidance of your advisors. You have to be willing and able to trust those advisors. The only way you're going to be able to trust those advisors is to understand all the levers that are involved in a proper, efficient 30 year retirement plan, everything that's involved. And it's not just investing. That's the easiest part, quite frankly. Investing is not the tough part. It's all the other pieces. And if you're not getting these right, the, the proper questions being asked to you, then you don't have the right team. And no wonder why you don't fully trust them. So attend one of these eight-hour classes so you can learn the questions, so you can see what a real 30-year retirement plan should look like and all the pieces that should be part of it. Attend one of our eight-hour qu classes to attend at one of our classes at, at most of the major universities in the area, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. 
Register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return with more on the Retirement Education Hour right after this. We're glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. What a great show this has been today. The topic has been, what are the questions you should be hearing from your retirement planning professional? What should your advisor be asking you? And Kirk and Michael, they've laid it out. A lot of questions that are really important that get to the heart of the matter. And if you're not hearing these questions, it's probably time to sound the alarm, probably time for that second opinion, take a pause, reevaluate. This is so critical as you get closer to retirement. You want to make sure you're getting the right questions asked so that you can have the retirement you've always dreamed of. Now, I want to make sure that you're aware of the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. We've been giving you ways to register today, and there's two ways. You can go to the website. You can also pick up the phone and call to reserve your seat. Keep in mind, these courses fill up very quickly. So we want you to go and find the location, the date and time that works best for you and claim your spot. The website is retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. If you're listening today in the state of Missouri, visit that website for the full list of locations, the colleges, the major universities where these courses are held. You can also, if you're in the state of Michigan, keep in mind that these courses are at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Novi and Troy, or Oakland University. And if you'd rather watch from home, you can do that. These are streamed live as well. Go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. And go back and listen to this show. If you missed something, if you want to share it with a friend, you're welcome to do that. Find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Search for Retirement Education Hour. Let's talk about what this all really boils down to, Kirk and Michael. You say it's all about a plan, right? Well, it is, Megan. So a little bit different. So usually the last segment of every one of our shows is what is the solution to whatever the topic is? The solution is always the plan. Today, I want to say it a little differently. The solution to knowing whether or not your team or yourself is asking the right questions as you approach retirement or if you're in retirement. To figure out if you are getting the right questions asked to you and you're asking yourself, it starts with education. And it's why the Retirement Education Foundation, our charity, for over 10 years has been teaching classes all over the country at major universities and colleges. Currently, we're in Michigan and Missouri, right? So here is what you're going to learn in the class. We're going to teach you what a 30-year retirement plan looks like, and it's going to map out year by year and investment by investment, account by account, when you should take money, from which accounts, at what age, depending on market volatility, market conditions, where you pull your money from during different market conditions is what's going to drive your success. And then mapping out where the most efficient places to take your money from at the right ages to minimize taxes is going to drive your performance and success in retirement. So once you see what a 30-year retirement plan looks like, mapped out, what takes us in our private practice about 60 to 80 hours to build For you to see what that is, then you'll know all the different levers that need to be part of a retirement plan. Then you'll know what questions the team you should be working with should be asking you. That's what it comes down to. You've got to find the right team because you've never done this before, ever. You don't know. You have no idea what is best to produce the best outcomes for you in retirement. Your relationship with money is broken. You're not going to be rational. As you age, you're going to be even more irrational about your money. you got to find a team you can trust. And the only way you're going to find that team you can trust is to understand the right questions and the right levers that produces the best outcomes. And that is, you nailed it in terms of, it ends with a plan, but it starts with the education because people will come to the class very often and, and they're armed with, you know, a couple questions they've picked up on from reading books or reading articles. They'll say, they'll come to the class with two burning questions. Should I Roth convert? And when should I take, when, I, when should I start social security or whatever questions they might have? Those are two common ones. And we try to explain to people, it depends, it depends, it depends. It depends on what does your plan look like? What's your current tax bracket? What's your future tax bracket? When are you going to retire? How much income do you want? Is legacy important? All 
all these questions that need to be asked of you first to then help to answer those future questions about what should this plan look like. But people don't know what questions they, that should be asked of them or what they should be asking themselves. And as a result, they, just, they skip right to the strategies, Roth conversions, investments, Social Security, pensions. But they're making those decisions without the baseline questions being asked or answered first. Michael, this class, this sounds like hype, but you know, we've been teaching. Forbes has featured our charity in, in, its web, in, it, in its magazine for a reason. Look, what you walk away from this class will change your lives because you're going to now know exactly the right questions to be asking, what questions people should be asking you, and what your plan should look like. And it's not a probability of success report or a dial. And if you get the right plan, here's what you're going to have. You can have six, seven, eight, even 9% per year out of your investments with a zero chance of outliving your income. Zero chance. You can save tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes. In fact, most of the people attend our class, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes because everything they're reading and what their advisors are telling them is the opposite of what they should be doing for their own individualized plans. They've The financial service industry, Michael, has tried to cookie cut this whole thing and create these general rules, and the rules don't apply to those people that have one to $10 million. They don't. You all have different pieces to a puzzle. If you want to be able to have that freedom in retirement that you've worked hard for, just attend one of these eight-hour classes. Look, all we're asking is for you to make a $29 donation to charity and commit eight hours of fully focused time because it is an an advanced course. It's like a master's level 200-page textbook that we're going to go through, teaching you very advanced strategies and techniques to create and produce the best outcome in retirement for you yourself. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Retirement Education Foundation is a fiscally sponsored program of United Charitable, a registered 501c3 public charity. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is paid for by the Retirement Education Foundation.